Hello and welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show, and this time I want to review Dig Dug. Now, Dig Dug is labeled as a classic arcade game, but for me, I never played it in the arcade. It really wasn't until using emulation when I got to check the game out. Dig Dug was developed by Namco and published by Atari. It was originally released in the arcade in 1982. Around this time, a lot of classic arcade games were released. It was also released on a ton of home consoles and computers, such as the Apple II, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, Atari 8-bit, Casio PV1, 1000, Commodore 64, FM-7, Game Boy, Intellivision, MSX, Famicom, Palm OS, PC-88, PC Booter, Sharp X1, Sword MS, TI-99-41, VIC-20, and later on it was released on the Game Boy Advance in a Namco compilation. Not only that, it can be found on plug-and-play consoles as well, and I think it's been unofficially ported to a few consoles as well, like the Coleco version. In this review, I'm going to review the Famicom version, which was developed and published by Namco and released in 1985. It was not released in the United States, just in Japan. Dig Dug is an action-type game where you play as Taizo Hori, and I probably butchered that name, but who cares at this point? And you must dig your way through the earth and take down two different types of monsters known as Puka and Figar. Pukas are a red enemy that look like a tomato with goggles. Figars are a dragon-like enemy that breathes fire. To eliminate the underground dwelling monsters, you can do it in two ways. Using your air pump and pump them up until they explode, or by going by the rocks you see on the screen and dropping them on their heads. If you get multiple enemies smashed by a rock, you will get bonus points, which is quite cool. Game sounds quite simple, right? Well, the farther you go in the game, the tougher it will get. There are a few ways you can die as well, by either making contact with the Puka and the Figar enemies, or you can be crushed by one of the rocks that should be used to smash the enemies. So you must be cautious at times. Now let's talk about the main character, Taizo Hori, for a moment. Although Namco has never given him that official name, he has made an appearance in other games with the Taizo Hori name. For instance, Mr. Driller. He is supposedly the father of Susamu Hori, which is the main character in that game. He is also the ex-husband of Toby Kissy Masuyo, and I'm sure I butchered that name, which is the heroine of Baraduk, a side-scrolling arcade shooter. I think it's a pretty cool backstory on the main character. The graphics for Dig Dug on the Famicom are pretty damn good. As you know, the Famicom is pretty much an NES in Japan. The game is colorful and has that old school arcade look to it. The characters and enemy sprites look good. The game does glitch a little bit here and there, but it doesn't ruin the game or anything like that, at least not for me. Other than that slight issue, not much I can complain about. Now, like a lot of classic arcade games, there is no ending to Dig Dug unless you hit round 256, which is the kill screen in the arcade version. At the upper right-hand corner, you will see flowers that will represent how many rounds you have done. After every fourth round, the color of the dirt changes. The farthest I've ever gone in the Famicom port is to round 12. And that took me a while to get to because this game can be tough as the enemies get faster and smarter the farther you get in the game. And that's what I like about this game. I like how it gets difficult each round. The music and sound effects are great. I love the music in this game, and it's actually pretty funny how the music is done. Now, you get a little music before you start, but the music during gameplay is when you walk. If you stop, it stops. I think that is pretty cool. The music is great, well composed, fits the game perfectly, nothing I can complain about there. As for the sound effects, pretty damn good. They're simple, nothing mind-blowing, but I really like them. The controls for Dig Dug are quite good. Moving around is easy, using your pump is easy, they respond quite well. Of course, there is a little bit of a slowdown with the controls when you're digging around, but that has nothing to do with the controls. That is just how the game is. And if an enemy catches up to you, that's just how it goes. Of course, you have to use tactics to try to avoid the enemies. Now, this will usually happen later in the game when the enemies get tougher. Other than that, nothing I can complain about. Overall, Dig Dug on the Famicom is awesome. It's a classic Famicom game based on a classic arcade game. Really nothing I can complain about. A few small flaws, but really the original game being from 1982, the flaws are very small. Only thing I wish the, there was in this game was more different types of enemies. I think it could have been done. I mean, look at Pac-Man. You have the multiple colors of Ghost. I think they could have done multiple enemy sprites. Other than that, it's a classic. Now, you're probably wondering why I didn't review the arcade version of Dig Dug. Well, I had some issues with MAME and the Dig Dug ROMs, so I wasn't going to fight it at this time. Maybe at a later time, I will do some Let's Plays on the MAME version of Dig Dug, and of course, other home console and computer ports. If you're looking to check out Dig Dug, there are quite a few ways you can. If you have MAME, you can play the arcade version on that. 
if you could get it to work. I think most people can, so it's probably not a huge issue. If you find any places that have those arcade classic plug and plays, you can play it on there as well. You can also find Dig Dug on the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo 3DS, and of course the Wii U Virtual Console. Not only that, it can be found on the Xbox Live Arcade. Now, if you can find Namco compilations, such as the Namco Museum ones, it was released on there as well. And those have been released on many consoles and I think even on PC. If you want the Famicom version, well, it might be a bit tough to find, at least here in the United States. For one, it would have to be imported or whatever country you're from, if you're from the United States or Europe or wherever. Unless a local game store that sells used games, if you have one, has a copy. I know some stores do carry a few imports, which is awesome. I think it's just badass when you go into a local game store and you see Famicom carts or other imported games. Of course, some of them are just way too expensive. Looking at eBay, the prices aren't bad. $5, $1, and one around $7. I'm guessing it's not a rare Famicom game, so price-wise, it's pretty decent. Of course, this is eBay, so you have to be cautious. I say if you have a Famicom console, pick up Dig Dug. It's a classic and very fun to play. There are a few sequels to Dig Dug out there, such as Dig Dug 2 Trouble in Paradise, which was released in the arcade and on the NES, Dig Dug Deeper on the PC, Dig Dug Digging Strike on the Nintendo DS, and then there's even an iPhone Dig Dug game titled Dig Dug Remix. At a later time, I will review these Dig Dug games. At least most of them, anyways. I would love to see a new Dig Dug game. I think it would be a lot of fun. Nothing too major, unless they make a platformer out of the series. That would be kind of cool. Maybe release it on all consoles and PC. Or give it to a small indie developer. Have them develop the game and Namco could publish it. Of course, I'm just dreaming. I doubt we will see anything like that for the Dig Dug series, but you never know. I hope you enjoyed this review of Dig Dug. Thanks for watching.